All right, um, 2D design class. I am going to talk to you today about variety, but before I do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about pattern um, because your assignment is going to have pattern. So um, pattern is a shape, line, or symbol repeated over and over again. It can be used to create unity or variety depending on how it's used. It can be intricate or simple and it can create a uh, rhythm within a composition. Uh, Henry Matisse is a good example of that because he used a lot, a lot of pattern in his work. It's very rich in patterning. So you can see that in the tablecloth down here, all over the place. Here is another example and another example. And we'll talk about this one in a little bit. Uh, another example of pattern is tessellation and geometric pattern, which just means that the shapes are repeated over and over and by flipping on the axis. So you can see here on the tile, it's there and then it's flipped there, 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 there. Um, uh, MC Escher does this a lot. So this is not required. I don't want anyone to think this is required. This is hard and can be frustrating. It's not required for your assignment. All right, so let's go right into variety. So um, variety uses several elements of design or art elements uh, to hold the viewer's attention and guide the viewer's eye through and around an artwork. So, um, so you can create that uh, variety through different sizes, different shapes, different colors, different textures, line directions, types, and values. You can create a, a variety by adding different art elements into one piece or having variety within the same art element. So this little example with line does that. Um, so variety and unity are the same thing. <clears throat> uh, the same, it's not the same thing, but there, the, there are two sides of the same coin. You can't really have one without the other. It would be very hard to create an image that was only just unity. That would mean that everything would be exactly the same with no differences. So maybe like a picture or a painting with only black dots of the same size. Um, any change in the size of dot would create some variety. Um, and same with, I don't know if you could have variety with no unity at all. Um, it would be like just chaos. Um, so you need both in a strong co composition, very much both. If you have too much unity and not enough, too much unity can feel boring, too much variety can feel chaotic. And so you want to choose kind of where you land on that spectrum depending on what you're trying to illustrate in your work. Um, okay, so real fast, let's go over these. Um, so in this image, the yellow one, they, so all of it is unified because there are circles, and the yellow one, they're unified again because of the color, and but the variety is the different sizes, and then the, the other, these ones, the, the unity is because of the same size and circles, and the variety is different colors. Um, Kandinsky was a non-representational artist during this, so it's 1926, and he was a lot of time, for a long time, he's considered the first non-representational artist, but that is debated. And uh, in this image, he's using large and small circles of all different colors, and that creates variety, and then the shape itself, the circles, create the unity. Okay, so Clint is a, a Hilma. She was an artist at the same time as Kandinsky and there is evidence that she was making non-representational art before he was but she's a lot less well known. Uh, so in this image there are again circles and then in those circles are patterns and those patterns create variety but also the different colors create variety also and the different sizes of circles creates variety. Okay, so we looked at this image a little bit. We're going to talk about a little bit more to explain where in this image is unity and where is variety. So the the sh the, the pattern in the red and on on the um <clears throat> sorry, the pattern 
on the wallpaper and the table creates a lot of unity because it's the same. Now there's a lot of curved shapes in that pattern and there's also curved shapes in the trees. So that creates unity between the outside and the inside. The circles of the fruit create unity. The shapes of the plant in the middle create unity because that is connected to the shapes on the wall and table and the outside. How is variety created? That green outside creates variety. Um, the different color fruits create variety. The woman creates variety. Um, the chairs create unity because there's two of them, but they also create variety because they're very different than other parts of the composition. Uh, so you can see the things that create unity sometimes are also the things that create variety. It's just a different part of it that creates the variety. So for example, the fruit, the fact that they're all very similar sized and very mostly circle uh, circles, that creates unity, but the fact that they're all different colors creates variety. Uh, in this example, the unity is created by the proximity of the objects. They're all cl close together. The continuation down here, that stripe, the um, kind of the overall like mauve color, that creates uh, unity because it's all together. And then the variety is created by the fact that each like Dish is a different dish, and most of them have different colors. Okay, so you can have emphasis on unity or emphasis on variety, or you could have emphasis on neither, and you're more in the center, um, kind of equal amount of unity and variety. But we're going to talk about what happens when you create emphasis on unity. So emphasis on unity would just mean that everything is very... Uh, similar. So in this image we have two um, twins, identical twins. So they look very similar. Um, there's very little difference between them and then they have the same shirt on or same dress on. The only variety we see is that her arm comes out and that her head is turned a little bit of a separate way. So even though they're both looking straight at us, her head is turned um, so, so there's an emphasis on unity. What happens when we have an emphasis on unity is it can feel unnerving. Um, so if you think about going into the street, going like walking out of the street in a suburb where everything was the same, every house was the same, every tree was the same, or like very close to the same, every flower, the flowers that were planted with the same flowers, everything was the same you would feel very unnerved, very uncomfortable. Um, it doesn't feel natural. So, um, so an emphasis on unity, if it's very, very unified and very little variety, can feel that way. It can also feel sometimes just boring, depending on what we're looking at. Uh, say if there was an image and it all was just the same size circle, but only like one or two or different colors, it might feel a little bland or boring. Um, <clears throat> uh, emphasis on variety is the opposite. So there's a lot going on when there's emphasis on variety. There's uh, a little, it's not chaotic, or I mean it is chaotic. It can be definitely chaotic. A lot of people see Murray's work as chaotic. <clears throat> um, so <clears throat> the um, this uh, and that emphasis on variety for some people not everyone it just depends who you are can also feel uncomfortable like walking into a very messy house can feel uncomfortable for some people um, so it's just your level of comfort with some chaos can, so variety can do that and artists will use a lot of variety to make people feel that way that can be a tool to kind of make a sense of uneasiness Here's this one. So it's also uh, emphasis on variety can have a lot of movement, um, a lot of colors. Like it can feel very energetic. It can feel um, in uh, Elizabeth Murray's work, it feels silly uh, and playful too. And I will be posting a video of her work that I'm going to have you watch too. Okay, so this is the assignment. I'm not going to go over it because there's a whole page 
that will describe the whole assignment and how I want you to make it. But I do want to just go over some examples so I can talk you through the examples. Um, so you have only two things that you have to do. Well, more than two, but main two things about the assignment is that you have to make circles and you have to have pattern. So within that, that having circles and having pattern within that, you can do, you can make whatever you want and design it however you want, as long as your image also has unity, variety, and within that a good composition. Um, so I want you to show how, show you how different students have interpreted that. So in this picture, um, she was very like influenced by biology and cells. And um, so, I mean, she's not copying them exactly, but they were an emphasis or uh, inspiration. In this one, the artist, the student, uh, it wanted to illustrate the seven sins. So she took a sin and she made a pattern out of it, um, made like a shape and then used it as a pattern. And then she made it into a map with uh, Texas, a map of Texas. Um, and she, it's kind of a, this Western thing. Um, this one is when you look at it, when you glance at it first, it feels like just a non-representational image. But then when you look closer, you realize there is a machine happening right here and pull a pulley system. Um, this one, um, it has a figure and I'm not sure if the figure is trying to catch all of those circles and planets or they're spitting them out like coming from their mouth. I'm not really sure which. And so you can see students take this in all different directions. Here's a very simple one. So you can do something more simple um, if you would like to. This one, the, <clears throat> um, the camera is like exploding but turning into bubbles. And the, the student was a photographer. And so she wanted to do something with her camera. Uh, here she took... Um, <clears throat> she made, uh, she did the story of Adam and Eve, and so there's only two circles, and there's most of the patterns within the snake, but again, oh, she also had circles in the hair. Technically, there was more circles because of that, but still, she's, she's fulfilling the assignment with the circles and the pattern, um, but she really is illustrating a story. Um, here's another one illustrating a story. So there's a person in, in like a bottle and then there's all of these eyes staring at her. And the eyes are the circles and the pattern becomes the shapes that make up the eyes. Like the eyeballs and, or the, the irises and the veins and those kind of things. Oh, and that's it. Okay.